Hello, boys and girls. Pearl of Wisdom here from PayPal. Picks and my NHL pearls. Window with wisdom window. <laughs> Anyways, and you know what we're doing here, right? We're looking at trades. We're looking at players that may be traded. And uh, I got an article we're going to look at about a player from the Toronto Maple Leafs that could be traded. Um, haven't did one in a while because it hasn't been a great trade year overall. And I generally just don't throw stuff out there unless it has some meat to it. If it actually makes sense. If you look at my previous trade videos, I'm usually fairly accurate as to who may go and who won't and where they may go. Actually, I'm not bad. It's, it's pretty good. Read between the lines. I read hockey is my life. It's my livelihood. Um, I'm a professional sports handicapper and to in this video, I'm also going to be bringing up some analytics from a fellow named Jay Fresh and uh, He has helped me with my sports handicapping like Unbelievably um, I've been a handicapper now for four years. My first three years. I did well Last year I started getting into analytics and did amazingly well. And this year I think it's even going to be better. So go into the description, hit the link in the description. If you like making money and having some fun while you're doing it, might be something you enjoy. But William Nylander, okay. Apparently him and, uh, we'll look at the article, but I'll talk a little bit of before. Apparently him and Toronto are in an impasse. Uh, and I, I don't think Toronto would not want to sign Nylander if they could, but they're already, and we'll look at that as well, $8 million in the, in the rears as far as being under the cap. I mean, they are over the cap by $8 million already. Apparently, Nylander is looking for something like $10 million a year. And if you look at the players on the team and the market, he probably has a right to be asking for something like that. He has been a 100 point player for quite some time, or has he is a 100 point player. So the Leafs may be forced to move on from him. So what we're going to do is we're going to look at Nylander, we're going to look at Toronto, and we're going to look at um, seven teams he may go. And we're going to look at the article in question that kind of gives us the indication that maybe things might be going awry there in Toronto with Nylander. All right, let's take a look. Here is the article in question. And this is from, let me go here. This is from uh, the hockey writers. They do a pretty good job. Mostly with the hockey writers is they get, they just find insider information and basically it's one place to go to see where insiders are going. That's pretty much what they talk about. Uh, contract talks between Toronto and William Nylander have hit a snag, leading to concerns about the star player. This was J July 4th, by the way, future with the team. According to NHL insider Chris Johnston, no negotiations are not progressing, progressing as expected, with both sides having significant differences in their contract demands. Nylander has taken the step of submitting this 10-team no-trade list. Now, when we look at these 10 teams, I have no clue if these any of these teams are on a no-trade list. I, if they are, they are. There's no way of me knowing. Uh, I don't know him, obviously, and I can't get in his brain. So you can use some logic, maybe, but with Nylander, I think that's kind of difficult to really... Uh, more likely, like teams like Arizona or something like that, but I don't know what his pure motivation is for doing what he's doing. So we'll uh, we'll just uh, we'll just do this eight seven teams and we'll see what happens. But um, the young forward firmly believes he deserves a contract in the range of ten million dollars. During an interview with the CJ Show, Johnston explained slightly higher, while the Leafs offers. The Leafs offers fall around eight million dollars. That is a significant um, drop or gap that they got to fill. So, what is Nylander worth? Um, Nylander's ten million dollars will equate to about ten point five percent. That's fair, especially if his production, which he got, has good odds of doing. If he can keep up his production, 
you know, he probably is worth somewhere around $10 million. And Nylander doesn't seem to be willing to play ball. So he's not looking, not giving a discount. With all that being said, um, now we'll look at Toronto. And this is their cap situation, as I was mentioning to you. And you probably already know, especially if you're a Toronto fan. $8 million over the cap. Now they have a little bit of reprieve here. Um, they have players that are going on long-term injury. Jake Muzzin will go on long-term injury, and that's 5.6, which still puts them $5 million over. Plus, they've got Matt Murray, who there's been talk about a bio with him. And that would bring them just under the cap with sending players to the AHL and so on and so forth like that. Maybe passing players through waivers. They can probably find the cap, which makes things difficult in for a lot of reasons. Um, if they want to trade William Nylander. It's going to be very difficult to take players back. That's the other thing. Um, because, you know, they still have this cap issue. Even if they can find a way to get rid of uh, Matt Murray's contract, you know, trading him to a team with a lot of cap space and attaching a draft pick to it, it's still going to be a tough go to get under the cap, even with not acquiring anyone else. So basically, they're going to have to, they, they can afford to bring back 8 to 10 million and they still got to do some juggling. But I, I think that juggling could happen. Like Dylan Gambrell will probably go down on the minors. Um, you know, uh, Connor Timmons, could, you could put that contract down in the minors as well. You know, there's ways to get to the cap. But man, they're going to be capped out this summer already. Anyways. With that in mind, it's pretty tough to sign Nylander next year to a $10 million contract when they still have, their, like, are they going to want to re-sign Tyler Bertuzzi? Are they going to want to get bring Max Domi back? Matthew still needs a contract. Um, yes, the cap will go up a little bit next year, but, I mean, is Brody going to come back? He might come back at last. You might need another defenseman. There's a lot of things. Sam Sonoff still needs a contract, by the way. So there's not much room. With that in mind, we're going to look at where Nylander may land. And we're going to look at William Nylander in general right now. He's 27 years old. He was actually born in Calgary. His father, that's right. Uh, I, his father's name, I, I, his first name, I always forget. But... He was a guy that used to chase the money a lot. And uh, one of the things that happened with him was he had a contract with the Edmonton Oilers. And um, they Washington was also vying for him. So it was between Washington and Edmonton. Edmonton offered him $4 million, And he pretty much shook hands on the deal. And then Washington said, we'll give you four. And he said, now nah, I'm going to Washington. Really pissed off Oilers people. Uh, as it turns out, it worked out really well. He was at the end of his career. He had nothing left. And he didn't do anything. It wouldn't have been good for Edmonton anyways. But he was kind of a guy that chased the dollar his whole career. And there's reason to believe that William Nylander may fall from the same tree. Not far from the same tree. You know what I'm saying? But as a player... He is fantastic um, as far as his offense is concerned. He had 87 points last year in 82 games. This is a guy that's probably going to be a 100-point player somewhere down the road. Uh, maybe, maybe not. But still, even 87 points in 82 games and 40 goals in this day and age, that's a lot. Yeah, he was one of the few guys that put up points in the playoffs, 10 points in 11 games. Um He's a very dynamic offensive guy. Let's look at him. This is Jay Fresh, as I was telling you before. I love this guy. Uh, he's my favorite. He's not the only analytics I use. I use a lot of different, but he is my favorite and a guy that gives me the best copying information as I, I can find. Here's the thing. Op, op, almost 100% defensively. This is play driving, by the way. At not, if you have a 97% on even strength offense, 
You are an offensive play driver. Um, his goals per 60, of course, is fantastic. His assists per 60 is fantastic. The problem with him is, and everybody knows it, you don't need analytics. You can just watch him. His defense is deplorable. In fact, last year, it went down significantly. Now, that being said, a lot of Toronto players' defense went down last year. So, take that with a grain of salt. Can he get back to his old 40%? Possibly on the right team, I think he could. And if he can, woo, that would be exceptional. But, like I said, for whatever reason, change of system, what have you, um, a lot of players' defensive stats went down in Toronto last year. So we'll take this with a bit of a grain of salt and think that he can get back to what he was before. But if he can, $10 million a year for those kind of uh, analytics – He's well worth it. He's well worth it. Okay, let's start with the first team. And this goes from kind of where I think is the least likely to the most likely. And there's seven teams that will be there. New York Islanders. Um, I put the New York Islanders here in here for two reasons. One, they would desperately need somebody like him in their lineup. I believe. I just don't think that... Barzal, even with Horvat in the lineup, doesn't give him enough to work with. Horvat is a is a go to the net and shoot puck first type of player. I don't think Horvat and Barzal are going to work out together. To tell you the honest truth, especially with Barzal on the wing, both of them like the puck too much. Um, I I just don't don't see it. What Barzal needs is a guy like Nylander. A guy who can create, who cannot play without the puck, play with the puck, pass, know what Barzal is doing in the offensive zone. I don't know how many times I've seen Barzal go in the offensive zone and everybody's standing around going, what, what, I don't know. I... There's very few players on this team that have a high offensive hockey IQ. And Nylander is a guy that certainly has that. And I imagine his defense would come back here with the Islanders as well. Question, of course, or the problem, of course, is there is no cap space in Islanders land whatsoever. Second problem would be, who do you give up? Um, I think it would basically, if this even has a chance of happening, they would have to give up a crap load off this roster and somehow because, okay, look at, let's look at their cap space that they have here. Nothing. Half a million projected cap space, cap space. This would have to be a dollar for dollar trade. And by the way, another thing that Toronto could be, uh, I didn't talk about what Toronto would be looking for, but um, there's talk of a defenseman and of course they'd want a winger back and stuff like that. So I don't, I know one thing, Lamorello will not give up defense for offense. Will not. I don't see a defenseman on this roster going back in this trade. They don't have much depth for defense either. I think if this trade's going to happen, it may be a three-way trade. I don't have time to go through a three-way trade right now. But it would probably be a pretty fancy trade where um, Nylander ends up in the island. Maybe uh, the Islanders give a player like um, Wallstrom and a first round pick to that team. And that team gives something to Toronto and stuff. That's basically the way that would have to go, but we'll just go flat out straight Islanders, Toronto here. I think it would have to be Wallstrom would have to be on the table. Um, then of course, like you said, you're going to have to get cap room here. They, they, they may, be able to with the cap going up the islanders may be able to give him the contract he wants next year so really they only got to cover up the six this year and then give him the contract to go with it they would not need kyle palmieri i don't see why toronto would want a guy like Kyle palmieri except for the fact that he's only got two more years on his contract and he's a winger that can play on that side on the right side and if they're getting already getting Wallstrom, they get Palmieri, they get Wallstrom, 
almost does it. Um, first round draft pick next year. And hope maybe you can cross your fingers and get somebody like Samuel Bulldog, who's looking like he'll be a pretty good defenseman in the NHL. Now, if you're a Toronto fan, you're thinking, I don't know if that's uh, if that's going to do it. <laughs> you know, I don't know if that's going to be enough. Uh, Palmieri's 32 years old. Oliver Wallstrom hasn't hit a stride yet. He looks like he could be a pretty good player. And um, Bulldog probably be lucky if he gets to be a four, a three, four, and a first round pick. I don't think the Islanders are giving much more than that to get him, though. That's the thing. So this is the reason why I have the Islanders very low on the list. For one thing, it's almost dollar for dollar, and Toronto's still going to be in cap trouble. For the other thing, Palmieri is just not somebody I'd be doing backflips over to have to pick up in this deal. And Oliver Wallstrom, we'll look at Oliver Wallstrom here through with Jay Fresh. Um, Oliver Wallstrom's a good young guy, kid, but he's not really knocking it out of the park. That's he's had a he's had a long run. Uh, Oliver, Oliver Wallstrom. There we go. He's had a long run. It's it's taken him a while. He's gotten way better defensively. His offense hasn't really started flourishing yet. His goals per sixty are good, but his play driving. He's pretty much. A complimentary piece on a line that finds ways to get to get goals. He's not driving any line though. He's sort of sitting around waiting for shots. He's not bad. He has upside. He's only 23 years old, and he could prosper in a more offensive system than like Toronto. But for me, I'm not. I would. I personally, if I'm Toronto, I would just keep Nylander and go for it next year. And just take the cap space and fill it in following year before I make a deal like this. Tell me what you think, Islanders fans. Tell me what you think, Leafs fans. Uh, would Leafs fans, would you do a deal like that? Islanders fans, would you do a deal like that? Um, oh, we'll look at Palmieri real quick because I just love looking at these stats. I think they're fantastic. He's actually a lot better than most people would give him credit for. Um, his, his even strength offense is high. He's a good play driver offensively. Not bad defense considering he's primarily an offensive player. And he dropped last year defensively, as did a lot of Islanders forwards as well. He usually plays higher defensively than this. I wouldn't mind him, really, to tell you the honest truth. But I just don't know if I want it for this kind of a deal, if he makes enough of an impact for next year for me to make that move. All right, Ottawa. This is tough because it's Ottawa. I mean, this is a reason why I have it so low. After Ottawa got, you know, couldn't re-sign to Brink at, which everybody should know by now, and I did when they made the trade, that it likely wasn't going to happen, that they would be able to sign him. Um, now they seem to be scrambling a little bit. There ha you know, there's talk of Tarasenko. And I'm going to show you something here about Tarasenko. All you people that are like, oh, we should sign Tarasenko. He's wanting like $7 million a year, something at least. And he may do a one year, okay? But Tarasenko has dropped off big time. Ex last two years, he has basically stopped playing defense. He used to be a really good defensive player. His offense is, his play driving offense is has not been great. He's basically become sort of a floater that needs to get the puck from someone else. As you can see, his goals per 60 and assists per 60 are good. So he's good at that, actually, in the offensive zone. But his overall game is average at best. So if you're wanting him at six, seven million dollars a year, just remember you're getting a very poor defensive player that doesn't look like he's getting better at it. And um, a pretty much average play driver who can complement a line for six to seven million dollars a year. 
You compare that to Nylander, who again dropped off badly defensively last year, but I think he could go back up again. Uh, might have been the way he was used, what have you, I don't know. But might have been just trying to get points so he can get as much money as he possibly could as well. And that was something that you don't like to see. But his offense is insane. He's, his, he, his play driving offensively is absolutely fantastic. Um, his goals per 60 and assists per 60 are fantastic because of that. If you can get him back playing defensively again, he's worth every dollar at $10 million, as I said earlier. So what would Ottawa give up in this deal? And they have made deals together, Ottawa and Toronto. It's not outlandish. I just think it's unlikely that Toronto would make this deal within the division. But um, it intrigues me that the desperation of Ottawa, I believe it's desperate because I believe the Debrinkat move is desperate and I don't think the desperation has stopped. The desperation of Ottawa to win right now, to win, is seems to be fairly high. What would you do in this deal? Well, I think pretty much for sure, Drake Batherson would have to go back in this deal. Um, they don't really need a right winger um, if you're bringing in Nylander, although Nylander can play both sides. He's better on the right-hand side. Um, then you would, I think you would have to either look at a defenseman um, and what's their cap space like? Sorry, I'll look at their cap space. Should always look at that first. They got five million in cap space, so they could w take him without for giving any bodies back, and probably work out the cap space for this year. Deal with the rest of it next year. Um, but I think Toronto is going to want bodies back if possible. So I think Drake Batherson could be in the deal. Um, maybe Ridley Gregg, or maybe you could get away with Igor Sokolov. They need big guys there. They seem to be going big there in in uh, Toronto. Um, in this deal, they I don't know how much leverage they really have. If you went Ridley Gregg, you probably would be all right there. And Toronto fans are like, that's all we're going to get is that? Yes, you're not going to get much. You're not going to win the Nylander trade, okay? It's not going to happen. Just get it out of your head. You're going to get cap space and a couple good players and hopefully a first-round pick to go with that. So a first-round pick, Sokoloff, Batherson, and um, maybe Jacob Bernard, Bernard Docker, who, for me, I just have not liked his progression whatsoever. He's going to have lots of time in Toronto. They don't need him right away. Maybe he does something. That something like what the deal would be. Sokoloff, Batherson, first round draft pick, and Bernard Docker. I think that's, and you got to remember, they're trading within division. So it could even be more than that. Because when teams are trading within division, they ask for more. They want more. If we're going to give, you know, strengthen our division, then we're going to get, we're going to want more back from you. With that in mind, do you like, um, do you like Nylander, who is in like almost 100% offensive player, rather than Batherson, who we'll look at in Jay Fresh, who is a pretty good second liner. Um, Drake Batherson, he's, you know, he's, he's, his defense is improving. It dropped his second year, increased in his third year. He's only 25. That can improve yet. His offensive play driving is well above average. And his goals per 60. So he, he, he puts himself in good position to score. He's a good, solid player. And he's a fairly big boy. He's, had strong, he's up against strong competition. And his teammates have been really good. So um, if I'm Toronto, I would strongly consider that deal. Because I don't know if you're going to get much more than that. I just don't know if Toronto would go with, would trade with Ottawa on this deal. Because, like I said, you're making Ottawa better. And honestly, on paper, you're not making yourself better. Tell me what you think, Ottawa Senators fans, Toronto Maple Leafs fans, or any fans out there. Would you do a deal like that? Would you even trade with Ottawa? Um, 
let's put it this way. If I'm Toronto, I would strongly consider it, but I am a little concerned about how much better I'm making my opposition. Next, and this is another one in, the reason why these first three, first of all, New York had no cap space, uh, Ottawa and Boston Bruins are within the division, which I makes it to me seem unlikely. There has been talk though of Jake DeBrus still, them still kind of having some unhappiness with the way Jake DeBrus kind of pushed out Cassidy in a way. I think there was more than just Jake DeBrus, but he's the one that asked for the deal. I, I, I still think they're kind of sour about that to a certain extent. I'm not really sure which way Boston is really wanting to go here. Um, I personally think they're going to keep whatever they have here and just try to fill out the roster over the years. I don't think that they're going to do a strong rebuild at all. So here's the thing. If they're not doing a strong rebuild, they will want to add to this lineup. And I know their cap space, they really have none. So this is going to have to be a dollar for dollar deal, at least for this year. Um, next year, does it get a little better for them? Yeah, they got guys coming off the books. Um, they don't have to sign Morgan. De or Jake DeBrusque is up next year, so he could be part of this deal. Um, you know, they got a lot of UFAs coming off a little bit. Uh, Forbert could be coming off. The cap could be going up. They might be able to fit them in next year. They're gonna have like thirty million in cap space, with players, to places to, with spots to fill. But if they're not looking to rebuild, and I don't think they are, getting a young player like Nylander and teaching them how to play defense again <clears throat> might be the way to go. So. Who goes back in the deal? I think it's got to be Jake DeBrusque and, and check this out. Linus Allmark. They could trade, you could trade uh, Murray here to back up Swayman. I know you'll probably be on the, you'll probably have to look for another goaltender, but just to make the dollars work a little bit. Um, and give Allmark and Jake DeBrusque. Now, what are you trading in trading Jake DeBrusque? Allmark had a fantastic year last year. I just don't see them being able to, after they signed Swayman, how do you do this? I know you're going to probably get, they're probably going to give Swayman a, a bridge deal here, but you're still going to have $8 million. Swayman's the guy for the future. It's a guy that you want for the future. If you were to take Nylander um, and... No, Nylander is way better offensively than DeBrusque. But DeBrusque is not a bad player at all. I like him better than a lot of what uh, Toronto has, actually. Look at this. 86% play driving offense, 79. He just had an incredible year last year. Absolutely incredible year last year. As a second liner, he is a top-end second liner. You're getting a top-end first-liner in Nylander, giving up a top-end second-liner. And although it was a Norris or a, a, a Vezina-winning goaltender last year, a goaltender that you're probably going to have to trade down the road anyways to get basically an, another number one right winger to fill out that group. And I think that's what you'd have to give. Honestly... I have a difficult time knowing whether I want, would do this or not. I The way Jake DeBrus played so well last year, he still probably has upside. He's a great two-way player. If I'm Toronto, I do this. If I'm Toronto, I do this. I find a place for Murray or whatever. I wouldn't even trade. I would actually trade Samson off and just keep Allmark, and that's it. I wouldn't, he's a, he's a restricted free agent. You could even put Allmark or uh, Samson off in this deal and Boston could, you know, sign him at a bridge deal or something like that, and they get a couple million off the books. That could work as well. I would do this if I'm Toronto. If I know that I can't sign Nylander and I'm going to get a guy like Jake DeBrus back with these kind of freaking analytics, I think I would do this deal. Tell me what you think, Boston Bruins fans.
Would you do something of this nature? Uh, you still need to fill out your roster a lot, I know. You're going to need another center, but the cap's going to go up. And you can start filling it out as you go. And here you get a 27-year-old Nylander who, you know, could possibly be a 100-point player down the road. 90 points. Fantastic winger. One of the best wingers in the league. Tell me what you think. Comment in the comment section. Let me know. Subscribe to my YouTube channel, too. Forget about that. Forgot about that. Okay, Carolina Hurricanes. And this is where the big rumor is that they'll go here, that Nylander could go to Carolina because Carolina had such a difficult time producing offense last year. Except they only have $2.5 million cap space right now. And they are everybody is signed. The lineup looks like it probably is going to be the way it's going to be, except for the fact that Pesci still needs a contract for next year. Um, they're fine for now, but Brett Pesci needs a contract for next year. I don't think that's as much of a big deal as everybody's as a lot of people everybody. A lot of people are making it out to be because you know, they've got a lot of guys that could come off the books next year if they wanted, but they have a salary structure. And if you're a ex defenseman, right defenseman, three, four, we're only paying you this much. And if Pesci's going above that for next year, whatever that number is, he could be available here. And as you said, no, I, I just said that one of the things that they could be looking for is a defenseman. The thing is, Toronto's more looking for right defenseman, left defenseman, or more looking more for left defenseman than right defenseman, I should say. But if Pesci's there, you know, maybe it's Brady Shea because he's going to need a contract as well. Maybe Brady Shea is the guy. Brady Shea isn't as good defensively, but he's not too bad. Um, and, you know, Marty Nietzsche, Brady Shea. Just those two players right there. Marty Nietzsche, Brady Shea. Gives them their right back. Gives them a left defenseman in Toronto to... Uh, where is Toronto here now? Whoops. And, you know, I got it. It gives them a left defenseman in Toronto that they say they're looking for uh makes sense mark jordan is not going to be there he's 39 uh jake mccabe can play the right side getting a guy like pesci to play with klingberg would probably be a good idea but i wanted to show you something here about this before we go on to too much further uh first of all if you were to get nietzsche he certainly wouldn't replace nylander Uh, and he had a bad year last year. He is a little under, he's a little overrated. He's actually quite a bit overrated. Um, his war percentile rank shows that he, he should improve offensively. Uh, his play driving is not great. His goals per 60 is average. His a six per 60 is um, first assist per 60 is very, very good. So he's a complimentary guy. So really what you're doing is you're getting a complimentary winger for a, a play driving number one winger in this deal. In which case Carolina, if it's me, is going to have to add more than even Pesci. And this is the thing. People talk about Pesci like he's the second coming of whatever. But... And I have in the past as well. He regressed significantly last year and the year before. His defense has fallen off the map. He used to be one of the best defensive defensemen in the league. Now he is more drives offense than he does defense, to tell you the honest truth. He's still a good, he's still a very good defenseman. He can play top four minutes. Top, top, he can play top pair minutes. He's still considered a top pair. So you're getting a top pair quality left defenseman who's kind of dropped off a little bit defensively in the last two years. That could change. But even that, even at his 32% uh, play driving defense, 
I still say that at his, at his play drive his play driving offense makes up for it quite a bit, and as you see the projected WAR, which is wins above replacement. In other words, what defend how many defensemen could win more if you had him in the lineup, and that would be about eleven percent of the league. There's only he's top, up there in the ninety percentile. So he's still a great defenseman. Don't get me wrong. And you're getting Nietzsche, maybe a pick for Nylander. Carolina fans, what do you think of that? You're getting an incredibly high offensive player. Go back in the video, you can see what Nylander's uh, analytics are. To play with Ajo, and Nylander had an off year defensively last year, but he's capable of playing much better defensively. Do you think that might happen under Brindamore? I would think so. This is a guy that can pot him. This is a guy that can play make. He can do everything offensively. Play him with Ajo, put Jarvis on the second line, and you are better. Now, losing Brett Pesci would be very difficult. No doubt about that. But you've got Dylan Coughlin looking for ice time. You can give Jalen Chatfield has, I'm not going to show the analytics on this for the sake of time, but he's progressing every single year, and he just might be ready to take that top four spot. Comment in the comment section. Let me know what you think about that. Toronto fans and Carolina fans. Okay, Nashville Predators next. Um, as far as the likelihood is concerned, what I like about this for the Nat for for Toronto, because one of the options for Toronto would be to just play it out and let and take the cap space and then add somebody in the off season. But here. With Nashville, they've got seven. They they can take his cap space, and they've got lots of people coming off the books next year, so they can sign him too. And they need to fill the building here in Nashville. I don't I don't buy at all that this is actually going to be a true rebuild in Nashville. I don't buy it. So to get a 27 year old guy like Nylander for them would be absolutely huge. Not to mention you got already got Gustav Nyquist, Forsberg is there. I wonder. If maybe this is kind of a play, you know, getting Nyquist to bring these Swedes, because Swedes love to hang out with each other. <laughs> maybe. Were they thinking something like that? Okay. They can take the full contract. I do believe that Toronto is going to want bodies that can play now back in this deal, though. For sure to me, without a doubt, Luke Evangelista would be part of this deal. They're going to want Luke. And, that, and I know how well he did last year. And a lot of Nashville fans are like, nope, not Luke, not Luke. I don't think you're getting Nylander if you don't trade this guy. If you don't trade for, for Evangel Evangeliska in this deal. And honestly, he looks like he's going to be good. Oops, I got to go to my forward group. It looks like he's going to be good. But is he going to be good as Nylander? I find that. Unlikely. He's he's got um, he 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 has to work on his defense as well. He's very poor defensively, which isn't uncommon for a twenty-one year old. His goals per sixty, as far as being a second liner is concerned, he draw he he drives offense pretty well already. Um, the question is, is he going to be the point to game, maybe a ninety-point guy like Nylander is in the future? Um, I have my doubts about that. I think he's going to be a very good player, 50 to 60 point guy and down the road, what have you. But I don't think he's necessarily going to be that. Um, the, but the reason why I like Nashville here, let's say they do trade Evangelista and um, maybe Dante Fabro, their first round draft pick next year. And a prospect. Dante Fabro, they don't need, really need right defensemen in Toronto. There could be Alexander Carrier, who has been, you know, had some growing pains. So Carrier, Evangelista, a first round draft pick, and a prospect of some kind. Um, somewhere around there, which what you would give up for Nylander. Now, the big thing for Toronto here is they're getting cap space. They're getting cap space right now. And they're getting a really good young right winger in Evangelista. So they could, some along the way here, add 
this year to make their team stronger. So that, that helps them. Nylander and Forsberg and O'Reilly would be a fantastic first line. Um, and, you know, you still got Nyquist and Glass and Sissons. You got a, you're building a solid group here. You still got a great defense, one of the best goaltenders in the league, and a guy that's going to bring fannies in. And he's still only 27 years old. That is Nylander. Um, with a lot of prospects coming up yet. I could see it. I could see it happening. What do you think about that, Nashville fans? Um, and what do you think, Toronto? Would you, I know it seems a little underwhelming. Evangelista, I think, is going to be really good. I think it would be a great pickup. Um, plus, you get all the prospects and a first-round pick. And you have cap space now because you basically haven't even... You base they you basically haven't even touched your cap. You're losing like you're gaining six million dollars in cap space. So throughout the year you can keep on adding. Tell me what you think about that, Nashville fans and Toronto fans. Comment in the comment section and let me know. Calgary, we got two more left. Calgary. Well, I'm putting Calgary in here. They have no cap space whatsoever. This would be pretty much a dollar for dollar trade. But I'm putting them in here because they desperately, desperately, desperately need to keep guys like Elias Lindholm, who is talking about wanting to not sign. Um, it sounds like Noah Hannafin himself is uh, is basically told him he's not signing. So you're starting to see where I'm going here. Um, there already has been talk of Nylander for Noah Hannafin. I personally, I love Noah Hannafin. And again, we'll look at his analytics here in a second. I love him. Um, however, it's going to have to be a dollar for dollar trade. So my, I think Andrew Mangiapani. And Noah Hennepin. For William Nylander. And you get a Swede to play with Elias Lindholm. You're bringing in another Swede. Swedes love Swedes, man. You got four of them here. Michael Backlund also talking about being a little unsure if he wants to come back. Rasmus Anderson is there. He's going to come back for sure. And Jacob Markstrom. You got Swedes for days. Swedes for days. And Swedes generally don't need to play in the sexiest cities in the world. Calgary isn't that. They love the mountains. Calgary has the mountains. They're used to the cold. Calgary is cold. It's not as cold as Edmonton where I'm from, but it's still cold in the wintertime. And possibly this relationship could build up with these guys and uh, they could, could work. Now, the problem is, if Elias Lindholm's calling up William Nylander and saying, don't bother, dude, I'm not coming back, then this deal doesn't happen. I think they're a little on the fence about it. It's been rough in Calgary. And I think they do love the city and they do love the fans and they've been there a long time. And Swedish people are usually very family oriented and don't like to move around a lot. They like to keep their families in one place. I think it's very possible you could talk Elias Lindholm and, and Backlund and them in, bringing in a guy like Nylander into giving her another go here in Calgary. So, Mangiopani, all right, let's look at our J Fresh here. Mangiopani really regressed last year quite a bit. Obviously, offensively, we already know that. Um, but defensively as well. Um, he still was driving high high offense last year, though. Um, he, he didn't put up the numbers, but he was still a, a second-line offensive play driver. Um, well, for some reason, his defense isn't coming up here. Let me pull up another one so you can see the defense. That's where he regressed big time, which is really weird because you would think under Sutter, but look at this, just nosedived, hardcore. His defense was up here in the, like right here in the 80 percentile, just bomb, gone, gone last year, which usually tells me a guy's playing hurt. Um, but for a guy, for Toronto, yeah, he's not a big guy, but he plays huge. He's a play driver. He could take that right hand spot and do pretty well. And you would be getting Noah Hannafin. And check this shit out. Huh. 
There we are. Driving offense, 91%. He's a huge offensive play driver. Above average defensively. Again, under Sutter, he regressed last year as well. He usually plays, he's usually sitting around 75 to 80% even strength defense effectiveness. Um, he is one of the most underrated gems out there. $5 million this year, you'll have to re-sign him next year. That could be a difficult the other problem is he's American. The question is, is it does he want to go to the United States or does he want to get out of Calgary? I think it could be the latter. I think if you gave him the opportunity to go to a team like Toronto, and now you've got, I mean, Toronto would look fantastic D-wise. You get Jake McCabe who can play both sides. Uh, Mark Giordano, he should be your seventh defenseman anyways. You play Hannafin with Klingberg, probably help out Klingberg a lot, a lot, a lot, a lot, a lot to have him there, uh, even more than McCabe. And McCabe is a pretty good, pretty darn good 5-6 to play with Lila Green. Yeah, that is one hell of a good defense right there. I'm not a big Morgan Riley fan, but still, he's good offensively. TJ Brody's still one of the best defensive defensemen in the league. And the thing is, is that Brody and Hannafin played with each other as well plus Giordano, so he gets to go play with a bunch of his Calgary friends here. I think that's the, that's the second most likely happening. I could definitely see that happening. Tell me what you think about that, Calgary fans and Toronto fans. Subscribe to my YouTube channel and let me know. Finally, my number one, Anaheim Ducks. Anaheim Ducks, these the Anaheim Ducks that you'll say, well, they're rebuilding, they're not going to do something like this, whatever. They just went out and got a 33-year-old Alex Kalorn. Um, this team has been rebuilding for, I think, too long. There's, there's a point where when you're in a, a market like Anaheim where you, you, it's not a hockey market, they don't have time to have 10 years of ass. They've got to start getting better now. Last year, they brought in Ryan Strom uh, and Vetrano to try to get a little better. So they weren't opposed to getting 30-year-old and 29-year-old players to help this roster out. The thing is here, a guy like Nylander, his personality, his flair, his offensive creativity, and everything he brings would bring excitement and seats into the stands. After getting Radko Gudas, who is a fantastic defensive defenseman, Getting Drysdale back, who needs a lot of work personally. I really don't think he should be playing as many minutes as he is right now. I'm not going to look at the analytics, but if you, you go get Jay Fresh and find out for yourself, he's not that great yet. But anyways, he would bring excitement. Play with a guy like Mason McTavish, who could use help with his offense, by the way, actually. Um, and is very good defensively. I think they would marry well together. So the question is, what goes back? Well, the good thing about Anaheim is they have plenty of cap space to work with. So they wouldn't have to give much back. I am going to propose to you something that you may find surprising. Okay. I like Adam Henrique going back as one of the players going back. And this is why. First of all, he's very underrated. He doesn't get enough credit for how good of a player he is. He drives offense at 86%. Um, he's above average defensively. And he's just an amazing human, apparently. He's like, everybody loves Adam Harik. He's a hard worker. He does everything a coach asks him to do. And he's only making 5.8 for this year. And he's going to be an unrestricted free agent next year. So he can help this year. I don't think he gets 5.8 next year. He's still capable of 50 to 50, maybe even 60 points on the right line. Um, and you could sign him for less next year. He could be your bunting again. And I think he's better than bunting, to tell you the honest truth. So that would start, and that's it. You're not going to take any more money back in this deal. So basically, you're getting all, you either don't 
sign Enrique next year and you get all the money off the books and you get a player to come back come back and play who played uh, who's played a long time he's a good veteran he can come back and play next year and try to get you a cup or you can sign him for less and be able to add more down the road now is that the only thing you're going to get back of course not you could go a unrest um a 2024 either t maybe top five or protected first round pick that could still give you a very good player you think um anaheim will do that possibly because if you could get a Nylander with that pick, you'd be happier than shit. Right? Like, it's very possible. So you could get another top line, you know, good, solid top line player that's young and cheap next year in the 2004 draft. Bring back Adam Henrique. He doesn't replace Nylander, but he's a solid player. Now, if you don't give up the first, there's other ways you can go here. Um, you could go into their prospect pool and look at some of their defensemen like Olin Zellweger, who is a left defenseman that's been just flying up the, up the ranks as far as being an offensive defenseman down the road. Um, he doesn't play bad defensively as well. Point-to-game player in juniors. In fact, he was over a point-to-game. He's dynamic offensive player. They already have Minta Yukov, and I guarantee you, you're not getting him. They love, 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 love that guy. But if you can get Owen Zellweger, maybe Sam, Col Sam Colangelo, Owen Zellweger, don't give us the first, and Adam Henrique, um, there's some building blocks of a pretty damn good uh, future. Sam Colangelo's offense hasn't progressed all that much in in you know, in uh, um, in college. He still has some work to do offensively, but he's a very safe pick to be at least a fourth liner or a third liner in the NHL. He, he, he's a solid big guy that Toronto kind of covets right now. Plus, you're getting Owen Zellweger. Plus, you're getting Adam Henrique, who you can sign for less, and. You're getting cap space to add more to the lineup if you want to. Combination of those things. Comment in the comment section, either Anaheim fans or Toronto fans. Tell me if you would add more, add less. If you think I'm crazy, what have you. I have no problems with that. I think I'm pretty crazy a lot of the time myself. All right. That's my full 42. Subscribe to my channel and let me know what you think about that. This has been a blast. I'll talk to you next time. I'm also doing a um, grading of every NHL team for the summer this year and projections for which direction they're going and how good they're going to be. Be watching out for that. I already did Anaheim in Chicago. You can see it on my YouTube channel. Hit the link and get in, boys and girls. Have a great day, everybody. Okay, bye.